Uh, good morning. Uh, hello. This is Alistair Spear, the publisher of Now Jakarta, Now Bali, and the chairman of MVB, bringing you a exclusive interview with uh, Oli Riches, who's the new chairman of the British Chamber of Commerce here in Indonesia. Uh, good morning and welcome, Oli. Morning, Alistair. Um, first of all, congratulations on taking this uh, challenging role of uh, head of British business when British business has just dissociated from European business. Um, I think it's going to be a, an interesting time. Um, and that's probably going to be our first question. Uh, just a little bit of background. How, how long have you been in Indonesia? Uh, I moved to, I moved from um, China to Indonesia at the end of 2013. So just over seven years. That's, that's long enough to see quite a significant amount of uh, change in Indonesia. And of course, over the last year, um, one of the biggest changes, um, and you, you're working for a, um, a company called uh, The Page Group. Perhaps you can just tell us a little bit about what they do. Sure, so yeah, so Page Group is the parent company of a, a business in Indonesia we called Michael Page, which really focuses on uh, mid-management to board level executive recruitment. Uh, across industry and and across uh, across sector, uh, we have around 60 people in Jakarta. We launched when I moved down here, end of 2013, and uh, it's actually been one of our fastest growing offices for the last six seven years. So it's you know, really put Indonesia on the map in the in the page group world, which is a global recruitment business of 7,000 people across 36 countries. So um, yeah, so yeah, you're right. It's been an interesting time um, to launch a business in Indonesia. Uh, and absolutely the right time as well. Um, clearly, events of the last 12 months have, have, have been interesting, but um, we are and remain very confident that Indonesia is, is and will be a, a very significant market for us in, in Asia Pacific. So um, so that's what I do in, in terms of my day job. Good. Let's, let's go on to uh, Bridgem. I know we've had a relationship with Bridgem for, for many years and, and look always at the, the, the dynamic way in which they approach um, their events, their, their, their lobbying, their, their um, work on behalf of their members. Um, but now we've got this Brexit challenge. Um, how will Brexit affect Britain's ability to do business? Now we understand the, the, the difficulties faced by the Britain-EU connection and the lorries at Dover and all of that stuff, but how will it affect Britain and Indonesia? Will it? Uh, I think from a top line perspective, the, the reaction we're having now is probably more one of relief from most sectors that, that a deal has been done rather than this limbo phase of no deal. Um, and sort of the clarity is coming from that. So the initial answer is, is one of, uh, of relief and potential opportunity, uh, which has been the shift in mindset, I think, from the previous period where nobody really knew what might happen or, or, or not. So in terms of UK and Indonesia, it's obviously not going to make very much difference, is it? Not initially, no. Um, that there's no there's no sort of uh, full trade agreement in place anyway. Um, so yeah, we, we believe the the conversations uh, are likely to open up as, as UK businesses explore opportunities outside of, of the EU, and, and Indonesia um, has a, a good opportunity to position itself as one of those you know countries to. Uh, for trade, but um, as of as of now, that, that there's really been no significant impact that we've seen. The EU is negotiating a comprehensive uh, trade deal with with Indonesia, is, is it not? Uh, Britain's presumably going to miss out on being part of Eurocham and the Euro deal. Is that, well, is that significant? From, yeah, for, on the Eurocham side, we, we are still very much part of Eurocham, so we, we have a board representation uh, from the British Chamber. I'm about to. Uh, announce who that is. Um, it's on rotation, so we're about to put somebody else into that position who has very strong ties to Europe as well and the European Chamber. So, so there's still very much a connection between the two. That that hasn't disappeared at all. And um, yeah, I, I think the, the impression I get, and I'm not the you know the absolute expert on this uh, for obvious reasons, but the impression I'm getting is there is likely to be agreements in place, but probably more targeted um, for Indonesia and the UK providing sort of immediate wins for both countries the the positive side of that is is clearly that doesn't then need 27 other countries to be involved in that decision making so that's the positivity side of it is potentially there's going to be quicker quicker wins uh, to be had uh, but this is all you know to be proven 
True. Um, the Eurocham is an effective lobbying uh, voice with the Indone Indonesian government, of course, and that if you're still part of that, that's obviously going to be uh, continue to be um, uh, a good thing to, to, to have. Now, UK businesses in Indonesia, I mean, you've got a whole bunch of really good companies on your board. How are they doing at the moment? How has, how has this whole COVID crisis affected your members? Um, of course, they're, they're pretty much across all sectors, but I'm sure some sectors are doing better than others. In general, how would you say British businesses are doing in Indonesia? Yes, and it's an important point you raised. One of the main strengths of the British Chamber is its representation at board level. Um, that there's 16 board members, and and they very much are um, divided up across most of the you know the, the key sectors in Indonesia, um, and not necessarily just the, the big blue chips, but also uh, representing SMEs as well. I, look, there's clearly some sectors uh, which um, are well publicised uh, are suffering with with everything going on, but there's also uh, we're seeing a, a you know a degree of uh, growth in some sectors, so logistics, uh, e-retail, digital. Uh, a lot of our members have spoken to us about the need to digitalize their business, and, and that process has probably been accelerated by by COVID and the pandemic. Uh, and, and all of this leads to you know hiring opportunities and, and opportunities to to look at things which maybe they wouldn't have done, or maybe they've been delaying and um, have had to sort of adapt and, and react much quicker than they would have thought. So, what what we have seen is our members, and we've probably surveyed a lot of our members on this topic over the last nine months uh, have taken a very responsible safety first approach uh, safety first approach um well-being of their staff has really been paramount um uh, and you know really has sort of um ensured the well-being so the vast majority of them have made cost savings that have allowed them to retain their their headcount rather than downsize in, in dramatic fashion so um you know I think the buzzword is really resilience, and that's really what we've seen across the bulk of our membership. I recommended um, a few years ago that Britcham had a, a tourism, travel and hospitality sector, uh, which was never taken up. Um, um, and now there's very few British businesses in that sector, um, which is just as well, because that's one of the hardest hit sectors in, in Indonesia. Yeah. Um, I can't think of any major group. The retail sector has been hit bad, obviously, Hero supermarkets are part of um, Astra, um, who are part of your mem part of your membership. They're obviously suffering, um, but uh, and of course the British school hasn't exactly had a good time either um, with being able to do face to face learning. Um, has anybody else really suffered, uh, Ollie? Yeah. I think traditional retail has been the one which we've seen most, so consumer-based, um, and that part of that has been the, the growth of the e-commerce space before COVID hit. To be fair, so um, the, the, you know, the e-commerce firms are going into into this with a bit of momentum, and that's probably again been enhanced. Whereas the traditional retailers were were on the back foot pre-COVID uh, in terms of adapting to the the new market. And Indonesia, as you know, you know young population, very digital savvy. Um, so yeah, again. We've seen the opportunity in this rather than the negativity and companies sort of pivoting towards uh, what a new normal might look like. Indeed, and, and, and even the, the, the very big um, insurance companies have got, gone very strongly online. And you have Prudential as part of your board who are, I think, have done pretty well from my, what I understand of the, the life insurance sector. Prudential certainly have. I mean, financial services as a whole has, yes, it, it's, it's had its challenges, but the fintech growth has again created uh, different thinking and different mindsets, which is, is never a bad thing. Um, and it's forced sort of more traditional businesses to, to adapt, um, which was much needed because again, pre-COVID, they were under pressure from some of the new startups who, who were, in honesty, from a, an employer perspective, more attractive uh, in many ways. Um, one of the other things which has brought this is brought into focus is the, um, the whole sustainability aspect of business, um, because no one really thought a crisis could affect their business quite so much. Um, they're all looking at, you know, going green, going solar, energy and all of that. Now we've got a, we have got a little bit more attention on that, which is good. And the, the banking sector looking at green finance and, and rather than, than anything else. Uh, so what, what's what are BritGem's programs and objectives for 2021? What are you going to try and do to put Britain and British business on the map in Indonesia? Yeah, obviously that's the most 
key question I get asked. Um, it's, it's very much aligning ourselves with the British Embassy and, and the DIT, the, the Department of Investment. Uh, so there's more of a, a one voice approach that the British Chamber isn't sort of saying something uh, different and, and pursuing different sort of um, uh, approaches. So the, the three main ones, and you've touched on one of it already, is climate change. Um, with the COP in, in, in Scotland um, coming up, there's a lot of work being done around climate change in the British Chamber uh, and its focus groups will certainly um, we've seen a very large uptake from our membership, almost half of our membership have, have um, either shown some interest or got actively involved in, in the focus group around climate change. Um, smart cities is, is obviously very topical and that will continue to be a focus area for the British Chamber as well. Um, and, and the third pillar of that really is, is human capital and education, which again you touched upon, um, it is, a, it is as much a passion project as, as, as anything else as well. But um, uh, a lot of work has gone into this over the previous years, which um, yeah, we're hoping comes to, to more fruition over the next period of time. So, so they're the three, and, and you mentioned it as well, there, there is obviously room for, for further growth of focus groups. So healthcare, life sciences is an obvious one for us to get more, more heavily involved in. Uh, financial services as a whole, uh, we are very well represented in that, in that space. Um, uh, and you know, uh, the, the sort of the desire for that energy uh, as a topic in general, not just renewable energy, but energy as, as a whole. So there, there's, there's, you know, and honestly, there's plenty for us to do. And, and the main aim for myself as the chairman and, and my board is, is to utilize our board to its maximum capacity, because we do have business leaders in, in all of those areas who, who have some um, real gravitas and knowledge and, and connections, which we hope can promote British interests uh, in Indonesia further. That's, that's, that's a very good um, portfolio of, of, of um, sectors you're looking at. I, I was asked to speak at an investment conference in London a couple of years ago, and I kind of surprised the audience by asking them what they thought Britain's strengths in the, in the world were, uh, because they're very, everyone talks about industry and trade and finance and all of that. And I said, well, look, you know, one of Britain's biggest strengths is sport. And sport is never seen as an export cooperation area. Um, I know that the, you know, the Premier League and but there's also Wimbledon and the Open Championships and stuff like that. That's an area that I think possibly Richard might start looking at. And the other is culture. We are really good at culture in Britain. It's actually a huge business. Um, and Indonesia needs a lot of help in that sector. What is that? Is there other things you think there's capacity to do more? 100%. And, and there's obviously a, a, a genuine interest from Indonesia in all things British. Um, and that's not being arrogant. That just that just seems to be the way that British products and British brands are, 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 you know, are appealing in Indonesia. So on the sports side, yes, I agree. And that plays to my own personal interest as well. We, we've done more work around the charity aspect of sports. So give, um, you know, giving kids a sporting chance is a charity that the Chamber has, has really backed uh, through Chris Wren, the executive officer. Um, involving the likes of Liverpool Football Club in, in, in programmes around that. Uh, the British uh, International School you mentioned earlier, I know they have some partnership um, opportunities they're looking at with the Premier League and, and certain clubs within that. Um, so yes, I, I agree with you entirely. I think sport is, is one of the most underrated and yet most highly um, recognised products that the, the UK promotes. I just think sometimes we're not brilliant at at, um, sort of voicing that as much as we could be. We're almost a little bit too humble. Well, one of the things that we were looking at um, a, f a couple of years ago is the fact that more people watch the Premier League on television than watch Indonesian te football on television, um, which is a huge opportunity, is it not? It, it, it is, and, and you know, the basketball, um, football, it, a, a huge. And, and in my my other business, Michael Page, we you know, everybody supports a Premier League football team. If they support, if they like football, they have a team, um, yeah. and that's the same across Asia. To be fair, not, not just Indonesia. So I, I think there are certainly opportunities around that. I think looking at um, sport for, for children and kids and giving them opportunities for programs overseas. Again, once the pandemic sort of subsides a little bit, is is a big opportunity. I mean, there's a huge talent pool in Indonesia. It just hasn't necessarily been recognised. Uh, golf, again, is, is another sport which UK is very, Scotland particularly, is, is very well recognised for. Uh, I've done some work in that sector here and 
um, you know, it's just a lack of funds, funding. So Indonesian golfers are not getting the opportunities that maybe golfers in Thailand or Korea or other cool. other countries are. And so I think there's a lot we can do. Now, clearly, there's reasons this hasn't happened. So I'm, I'm not saying that we can solve every problem. But, um, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Um, Oli, we are at the end of our time. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, this conversation could go on forever because there are so many things that Britain can do to help Indonesia uh, through business, through culture, through through uh, diplomatic uh, side. But congratulations on your new role. Um, we are here to support you. This is going to be part of our um, UK country focus, um, which we try and bring the best of, of what Britain's doing. We'll have the ambassador online with you as well. Um, and we're trying to cover as many of the good things that Britain is doing as possible. But thank you for being with us today and good luck in all you do. We're here to support you and thank you. Thanks, Alison, and vice versa. Same thing, looking forward to partnering with you as we go forward. Thank you very much indeed.